No, no, no. She's the, no. Iron ladies, iron ladies, do not say the boys are ganging up on me. You can't imagine Thatcher. Trying. Oh, she was just doing that to be opportunist. No, no, she's out twice now. But also, I, Thatcher did weep publicly at the memorial meeting, memorial service for the, those who fell in the recovery of the Fulton Islands. But I don't think she ever welled up in any other way. Oh, she did when she was uh, expelled from government. Oh, perhaps she did that. <laughs> yes, she did. Well, I saw. Well, you would. I saw. I was there. Her tear was photographed. Maybe brushing away a fractional. No, no, it was the, the, when she was actually no, in, no, in, in the car on the, on the way out of Downing Street. The, the tear was was brilliantly photographed. It was there. Right. Unwiped. That was that was the night it was all over. That was it. Yeah. The night when she was first voted out, when she was in. Yeah, she didn't away. believe that. I she was there on the steps. She, she said, "I'll fight on." But she'd make it with the British in the football of Saint Honoré. And I also met in my time. I met Benes. I met Benes Abuja several times. I've met Mrs. Indira Gandhi. I did not meet Mrs. Golda Meir or Mrs. Bandra Naika, but the women who really had to put up with male-dominated societies and a real male persecution are not self-pitying and whimpering in this awful way. I think that, no, that, if I was a female or a feminist either, that I think would get me down a lot. You either are as tough as or you are not. Or as humorous and ironic and determined as. Well, you're not, oh, you see, aren't. Maybe the difference are. Can't have that both ways. Think deep down, she is tough, and this is all handling. This is show your warm side. I think it's calculated. I think she is tough inside. Well, she is when it comes to her her own um, interests. Yeah, she is. She's relentless. Yes. Well, I saw her shed a tear for herself in New Hampshire, as did everybody else. What I'd like to know, what I said in my piece. Would, is it conceivable that if it was pointed out to her, as it has been, that her telling Clinton, her husband, her uh, disbarred, perjured, impeached, professional liar husband, <laughs> to stay out of Bosnia in the first place probably cost 200,000 lives? Would that thought make her shelter? I'm willing to bet you everything I own that it would not. She could not, it couldn't, it's not conceivable to imagine her shedding a tear for another person. That is what I'm looking for. And I think I've found it. What it means is she, she's, she's a psycho. <laughs> you like him. Peter, you have thoughts on the... No, no, I think we had an agreement in 1776 or right about then that we stayed out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to that. So no outsider's perspective. But it's we have enough problems of our own. Now, I, I, gather, I gather she's joined a very extremely conservative religious group now to validate her faith claims, which are the latest incarnation. And I, now, I noticed that Senator McCain has stopped being an, uh, an Episcopalian and become Baptist. And I see that Senator Obama has joined some rock and roll shout and holler horror, horror <laughs> church, or me, has been for a long time. So it looks to me as if religion is poisoning the campaign in a big way. And so every candidate kind of seems determined to defame and trample upon the one thing that makes the United States the great country it claims to be. Just, you don't have to do any of this, and the government will never tell you you can. It's a real shame. And I hope they're changing ships on a falling tide as well, because all the evidence is that the number of Americans who are not impressed by supernatural claims is, is the fastest growing group in the country. Oh, yeah. Books that have been selling. Sam Harris, you. Yeah, yeah, but the Pew, the, you read the Pew study. The largest, the, it's 15% of Americans now say they don't identify with any denomination at all. 40% of it change their denomination at least once. The ex Catholics are, or the laps, as the church insists on calling them. Because you can't leave, as you know, a totalitarian church. You're not allowed to leave. They, you can be excommunicated, you can't leave. Um, something that people don't understand very well, is, a huge, is, is the largest group in the country. But the fastest growing group are those who don't identify. And they are regularly insulted by candidates who act as if they don't exist. Well, they do. We do. And that's to say nothing of the huge numbers of people who do say, yes, I'm a Lutheran or a Catholic, and who aren't, really. And who are riddled speeches. with doubts. And, um, the two speeches that are getting so much comment this campaign, McCain's speech on his Mormonism down at the Bush Library and the Obama speech in Philadelphia where he's trying to transcend 
it's a racial issue. Well, that should say nothing of what got uh, former great Michigander out of the race, yes. I mean, but I mean, that was disgraceful. I mean, he, if you remember when, when the Carolina primary was in major contention, he didn't even go, I think, to the state. He stayed entirely in Nevada, where his campaign was run entirely by a Mormon sectarian machine in order to get eke out a narrow victory there, entirely based on confessional turnout and, and donation, making himself the Mormon candidate. Yeah. The crackpot racketeering sect. You know, the, no, one can lo no one can look at the Book of Mormon or the history of Joseph Smith without realizing that they're seeing a plain fraud being involved in the, in the clear light of day, took roars of laughter from its originators. <laughs> you don't want to be able to. I mean, it's, your it's enough to make enough to make a cat laugh. Whisper. Have you read Fawn? Have you read Fawn Brody's book on Joseph Smith? No. Well, God damn. You know, the local <laughs> news, <laughs> the local newspapers of upstate New York, draw a perfectly good picture of a many times convicted, very very charismatic fraud. So, Peter, are you saving all your pissing Nothing more. I, I don't want to. I, look, nothing more. How many of you are here? I mean, look, let's <laughs> say it. Gosh, and we, we're supposed to do this and make it <laughs> so jump around and get that it's short. Been, so it's been a fantastic no. campaign from the secular point of view. Is it what, what the crying lack of a missing quality. Is that becoming increasingly? What we want is less faith-based pretense, less faith-based hypocrisy. Why do they insult us? But thinking what we want to hear as professions of... We don't. We want competence and integrity. No, we don't want professions of, profession of supernatural religions. Can I ask you what you think? That, by the way, is true. I should just say one word. That's true people, I presume, who are honestly and sincerely religious. They don't... They do not want to hear their own faith exploited. Yeah. Or, or cheapened in this Yeah, no, I think that's true. Let's keep this last. Well, let's hope it's a big miscalculation, this uh, religious conversation. Yeah. I think it probably is. So we got to scoot here pretty soon. The last question. Um, um, I just wanted to ask what you think the, what role does the media play in that? Um, in, th in this aspect of it. Lazy, I think they tend to make the assumption that a person who's made a claim of faith has ticked a, a, a box that the electorate expects them to check. And I think that the, it's an unexamined assumption that could stand a lot more examination. And as I've told you, I think when I'm very ashamed of the way the profession behaved over the Danish cartoon. It's happened again this week. Sam Harris was asked to do a piece on, on the revival of the Danish cartoon question by the Washington Post, and that they're not going to print it, and they've more or less told him why. Because it, he uses this idea of religious violence in the same sentence as the word is not. And they're not willing to run that risk. And they can't, they can't have expected he would avoid the question. And they can't very well ask him to forbid himself to speculate on it. So um, it's a combination of cowardice and consensus. Actually, cowardice and consensus would be the name of any book I wrote about any aspect of the Latin <laughs> Well, hopefully the high grosses you guys are getting with, with your books will change the media a little bit. No, but they won't. No. <laughs> <laughs> they won't. Well, thank you very yes. much. Thank you for your Well, please, for another.